My name is Terence Michael Fife, and I see myself as a painter in the classic tradition of Cimabue or Giotto or whatever. I see myself as part of that painting confraternity. When I started painting way back when I was a teenager, I had high aspirations. I wanted to be a great painter, you know, it's like what's the use of mucking about? You know, if you're going to do something, let's really give it your best shot. I was or am inspired by a lot of the modern artists, Kandinsky particularly, Picasso to some extent. I also love many of the old masters, particularly people like Hieronymus Bosch. I love the detail of the old masters. I love um, medieval painting. I love uh, the Van Eycks and the, those religious paintings where, you know, the detail is just so exquisite. So that's what I want to put in my work, but, you know, different subject matter. This painting is not finished. I'm considering leaving it as permanently unfinished because this was the painting I was working on, particularly all this stuff here around the Christ that led me to suddenly realize that what I should be doing is painting the Holy Spirit. This painting is part of the Passion series, Passion of Christ, which is his suffering before he died, was crucified and then rose again, the resurrection, which uh, was the message of hope and that all Christians cherish as being the whole meaning of their existence. I've titled it Christ Carrying the Cross, homage to Hieronymus Bosch. I like the composition, I'm, I'm very happy with it. It is harrowing but I think it conveys um, a lot of, I think it conveys Christ's suffering. I think it conveys the message of uh, the fact that Christ did suffer for us. This painting's gonna go on the show and I've called it The Street or On The Street. And it's about society today. I mean, this was painted maybe 10 years ago before everybody had a mobile phone. I suppose if I was to do it you know, now, we'd all have earpieces, but it doesn't make any difference really. The situation hasn't changed that much. Each, each head or each person is concerned about their own, where they're going, what they're doing, and almost like oblivious to their neighbor or whoever's next to them. And I mean, that's, you know, that's what it's like in a crowd, isn't it? You're, going to work or you're going home or you've got to get to the cinema. You've got this character who's actually looking out of the picture and it's sort of like he's the only one who's aware of something else, you know, in the picture. With some of those paintings I was nearing a sort of style and mastery that I was happy with but then a remarkable thing happened. You know, I got to painting the resurrection of Jesus. I suddenly realized that what I was doing was sort of in a way imitating what had gone before and what is required of me or what the Lord or my spirit was wanting to express what was original. And I always had this sort of work in the back of my head um, I did sort of do bits and pieces of it, you know, in the 30 years I was studying the old masters, but could never quite get the full handle on it or something. This new art, uh, the cosmic art, I think does not depend on having an art education, and I think it does not depend on you being brought up in the West 
I think it would appeal to anybody from any culture because I think it's something that resonates within ourselves, deep within us. I think people looking at it recognise that it's some spiritual thing and I think it's beautiful and people like the shapes. Mathematically, we can show that we can go infinitely small. The space inside ourselves, our spirit, our brains, our soul, that is infinite as well. This is, I've called it Big Bang Alpha Omega, and it's sort of like the whole idea of an instant in time, everything came into being. As a Catholic, that's representing the host, which we see as the body of Christ, but, um, it can be anything, it can be just a, a sphere of light. I and mean, it's the first painting of its kind, and that's why I see it as important. This is more like an impressionistic technique. There are a lot of different art movements in the 20th century. And one thing I'm excited about my work is that it touches on a lot of these different art movements without being derivative of any one of them. The shapes that I'm interested in, you might call them fractal shapes. There's a sort of mathematics to it. I'm not interested in the calculation. I'm interested in the beauty of it. Years ago, I'd done a series of work called The Artist as a Fool, and I was highly successful, actually. I sold a lot and won a prize with one of the pictures. And um, I sort of uh, got to a point where I realised or thought I'd realised at the time that actually I was a fool. I'd wasted my life. So anyway, I found myself in the church. I'm kneeling there praying, tears in my eyes. I mean, I've just never been so low in my spirit. I was probably in what you might say the depths of despair. And then I heard a voice and it told me to do this work, meaning this work that I'm now engaged in, and I will take you to the top of the art world there to proclaim my name. And my tears of despair changed to tears of joy. Initially, I couldn't believe it, but I mean, it was so overwhelming. So, um, and I had, you know, I mean, I was at a point where I've got nothing to lose, absolutely nothing left. So um, I, threw myself into this work and um, haven't looked back, so to speak. It's all true. <laughs> the inspiration for the work comes initially from meditation, which is a form of prayer. And uh, in meditation, um, you can have all sorts of different experiences in meditation, but um, certainly many times I've had this experience as of going on like a journey to the light, you know, and it's sort of, sort of like a kaleidoscope, but, you know, I see patterns and things through photographs that we get from the Hubble telescope, through the electron microscope. Although they're not exactly the same, they share a similarity. And then looking at nature with the naked eye, I see similar patterns in an autumn leaf, or if you're looking at a piece of wood, that seems to me to be something of a truth. I'm happy to paint all day, really. I paint till I'm buggered, you know. So I do it all again the next day. It gives me great peace when I paint. I feel like there's nothing I could be doing that is more worthwhile. I feel like um, I'm good at it. I'm doing something that I'm good at and I'm, it's the best I can do. And I'm giving something back to people because people like it. I mean, you know, it's been great to earn lots of money and it'd be great to have all these other benefits but at the end of the day I'm happy to do it. I have done it for many years for nothing, you know, painted for thousands and thousands of hours for nothing, you know, put on an exhibition, didn't sell a thing, you know, it's like what are you doing? Why are you doing this? You know, no one wants it. 
you know? But there's something inside. I'm happy painting, I'm happy doing it. It makes me happy. I suppose I'm contented when I'm painting, you know? I mean, if I'm not painting, after a while I get very sort of bored and restless. And I mean, if I go on holiday after, you know, a little while, I think, I've had enough of this, you know? Let's go and do some work. I hope to do something that's really mind boggling, you know, that people go, you know, just to blow people's mind, that would be the thing. And, and just be, what they say, gobsmacked, in awe, just want to keep looking at it. But, you know, haven't got there yet. So it's sort of like, if you like, there's a, the holy grail to get to that point where I've done the best painting imaginable. But, you know, probably, probably, that's probably just vanity, isn't it? <laughs>